All right, man. Going into game. Yeah, game one here loses quarters between Ape and Man and Mal. Already, you can tell, but like the minute that Ape and Man kind of just gets in in the range, Rob doesn't have much of a difficult time trying to deal with things like things like focus attack or focus attack cancel. Rob has multi hits to actually deal with that as well, especially when characters like can be in the air and try to use it as a landing option. Rob can just eat that away. Oh, tough spot to be in here. Shario, good DI, still surviving though. Like I mentioned, the fireball can cause problems. Especially because now it's forced Ape and Man to go for the low recovery. You can see Mal and try to easily get the edge guard by going for a Tatsu off the stage. Good play here. Either I would have seen a backer or a Tatsu for that situation play out. Yeah, I think... Usually they're going to go for a Tatsu in that situation. Like, if you get the Tatsu to clip, then you can do something on uh, on their, their recovery again. But otherwise, you want to be safe. If you whiff bear, then you're in a whole world of hort if you do miss it. But good stuff right there from Al Mazen to get that first stock. And now this is going to be a, a rough one here because her 8-bit man, having that big frame rob is very scary in terms of uh, Tatsu setups. I mean, Tatsu setups in general are already like scary in terms of the mix-up afterwards. But man, like your rob, it's just like, dude, it's that much easier. You got to be super on point with your DI and stuff there too. Like, for that example right there, we saw him go to Tatsu, but because he was robbed and he initially DI'd in, he actually was inside of, um, like, Rob was inside of Ken's hitbox. So he yeah. actually could have just turned around and gotten a guaranteed combo off of that because of it. So there's a lot of situations that are going to be really scary for 8-Bit Man. Good stuff there. Got him with a cross-up fair into DP to close the stock. And look at this 3-1 to one deficit already, man. Yeah. Oof. You can see the mouse going to town, like you said, having like that big frame does put a robber a little bit on the back foot. Yep. Especially because you can't can explode you at just about every percent. Mm -hmm. Miss Absolutely. Crab? I mean, he did double jump. He should be. Oh, he's gonna get air dodge. Uh, that should be killing there. But dude, he did double jump off the ledge uh, in the Tatsu, and he got a guarantee down till out after that, and that led into 50%. Yeah. Off a of reversal. And it seems like Ape Man is kind of content here to play the slow gyro game as much as possible. Even though we are seeing some situations where Ape Man tries to get a Nair, he finally pulls through here, gets a down throw here, nice tech chase situation. He's unable to confirm into that option there. But still good for Ape Man and just trying to find those percentile options when he can. Finally gets the forward. I like the opportunity to read, okay, hey, maybe Ken doesn't want to go to the ledge and be put in a ledge situation, so he might offer a roll get up on that up smash. But unfortunately, Mal will not fall to that one. Yeah, I mean, honestly, that that could have been stock. Uh, and yeah. What a call out! What a call yeah. out! Yeah, man, sure you, man. But not surprising, right? Like you do not want to be in a corner against Ken. Most people are gonna try to run out, uh, or double jump out, or something of that nature. So a really smart play by Mal. He's been really on point on pressuring his opponents into that situation, and uh, just going out, man, with the preemptive anti air been really good stuff from him thus far yeah looks like they're opening to push it back or right back to ps2 here uh i'll actually know they're they're pretty much uh, the opponent is now choosing a stage of course because now yeah, it's into a factor of course they opted to go to ps2 pretty much the neutral neutral starter of that situation uh honestly there were some like there were some situations where i felt even man had the right idea of like Okay, let me down till here. Let me probably try to pressure Ken with gyro and laser and then bait out his jump. But like there are some situations where Mao is just like, I don't really need to jump in this situation because you're already up preemptively approaching, especially with Nair. So all I need to do is either shield or parry that and then punish you for coming into my range. I think Ape and Man yeah. might want to play a little bit more of the like, not want to say flow chart, but like projectile slow game and then finally try to, try to see if you can get a confirm. Something that you would usually see in a playstyle like Young Link. Yeah, I mean, see, the thing is that I kind of feel like that was a problem, though. He fell back into that too readily. A lot of times when you fall into it, it was already in mid-range where Mal would just kind of jump in and get pressure from there. Or get him with a Tatsu. Like, so I just feel like he needs to be really careful when he's going to go in. Like, he needs to get some bit more space between them if he is going to try to go for that zoning game. Like, I, I yeah. like what he's doing here. Um, 
I mean, because it's as crazy as it seems, like, <laughs> Rob Downhill is that damn good. It yeah. is absolutely insane. And so it's like, he does have some spacing that are a little, like, mid-range, cuts closer, where he can deal with Cannon away. But, man, the, the main thing here is, like, Mal has been getting a lot of great jump-ins on Gyro, on Nairs, right? He, and he anticipates the landing there. And it's like, again, Nair doesn't have the greatest startup for Rob. It's really, wow. Yeah, caught him drifting for sure. That was a, a Cat G special right there. Yeah. So we're going to go into the, the next stock. Let's see if we can get something good landing there. And it's kind of like you yeah. said, right? You kind of want to be able to force the situations where you're able to space around Ken if you need to. And I think Town and City is a really good choice for Ape and Man. Just because he has the space to do that at some situations. Good down tilt, like you said, right? It's that damn good. And it's able to just kind of like go over some situations. No tech. That caused the triple, actually. So that allowed Ape Man to get a confirm there. Yeah. So see, like, I feel like all this time the pressure was fine. He gave him enough uh, runway where he'd go and set up Nair if he wants to come in and pressure. If not, then he's able to set up Gyro. Good timing there. J turns back around. You know he's been paying patient for the majority of the time. Rushes in, gets himself a grab, and throws him off stage. Uh, oh. Good setup. And that is your life. That these are the kind of things you want to see there, right? Like, I think that A Bit Man usually plays his game a little bit closer, um, but now he's realizing he's got to distance himself out because if he does, if Mal does get a read on a jump in. Like, that's just too much damage. You just yeah. don't want to deal with that. And Tatsu beats out a lot of... Tatsu could potentially beat out um, starting up his short hop Nair, like from um, 8 Man. Uh, it's going to beat out Gyro. It's going to beat out Down Tilt. And it's going to beat out Laser. So, like, Tatsu just covers a lot of options in that situation, as well as, like, full hop uh, Nair. So, I, I love that he's being aware of that and just staying a little bit farther away. Nice. Uses the Tatsu to actually kind of go through Gyro and not have to really interact with it. Yep. Uh, still able to survive. Oh, but man. No so Ape unfortunate. Side, yeah. I love what he was doing. Go for the fast fall. He really wanted to try to snipe that DT, but wasn't able to get it. Now, this is going to be a rough one. He's got to play careful here. Yeah, okay, even, get in there. Even just being 14% against Ken, right? Like you said, big frame means you're a bigger box, and with Ken, you'll easily fall into the wow. Ape and Man catches the break he's been looking for and pushes on to game three. Oh, man. I swear to you that Mal must have forgot, he, or maybe just was thinking about that situation, but he, he might have forgotten that that thing reflects. Because <laughs> that, that was a very wonky situation there. It was the ending side of the um, rotor arms that end up getting the kill. Yeah. Rotor arms are ridiculous. Like the fact that they can just Rob can do a lot of crazy. Not only can they reflect, it's a pretty it's a pretty common option you'll see from Rob at the ledge, but also they can go ahead and confirm into an, an option in which they can kill you early with rotor arms at the ledge and even off stage as well. So it's it's a scary move to deal with. I don't know. I feel like for some reason they just even though you don't see Rob's a lot in top eight, they're still a very difficult character to deal with. If you're not really aware of the matchup, uh, I think Mao was at, at the beginning. Mao had a really good like sort of like, okay, I'm gonna just play as best as I can with Ken, and then try to see how Ape Man reacts to my defensive playstyle, in which we saw Ape Man kind of make an over approach, and now we saw Ape Man slowly take it back a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I, I think regardless, the character is just good. Yeah, you know, like the character is just good. Period. So it's like it, like Rob is just so good, and as you said before, the box is one of the greatest boxing tools in the game. Got great projectiles. Combo game is insane. Yeah, you which know, is crazy for a zoner. Carries. For sure. For sure. Alright, well, here, let's go to game three here. Mal, once again, versus Ape Man. No more Town and City. We're back on PS2, so we'll see how things change here once again. Now in the game three scenario here. 
Oh, that man missed the corner carry on victory, but that's still a good percent on 33. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, that, that's a situation where, again, if you're looking at raw specific stuff, that's a Tatsu into like down tilt, proximity jab stuff, um, like into another Tatsu. Like, yeah. And you just rinse and repeat that across the stage. Like, it's scary, scary, scary against Rob. And even Ape Man's aggression and a little bit of spacing, like he did an excellent job just keeping Gyro in place where it was towards center stage so that if Mao wanted to try to make a jump from the platform, Ape Man could read that or Ape Man could sense the fact that, you know, he's going back to the ledge, giving him more advantage. You can even see like every time Ape Man goes for a projectile, he sets it up to center stage again and see how Mao is yeah. going to try to fight for it. Wow, yeah. Ape Man's like, wait, what am I doing here? I need to get out of here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh man, that should have been the stock, but yeah, Mal doesn't tend to do up smashes or anything out of shield, I've recognized. It, he usually goes for a grab out of shield, it's very interesting. Yeah, that time he got him on the end of a like tipper tattoo, so he wouldn't get anything there. Oh, that would have been sexy. Oh, a nice down tilt here. A little bit too early on the down arm. air. Yeah. I think he was looking for him to go for a preemptive one. Yeah. Oh, this grab. Finally, yeah, yeah, him with the nair. Yeah, that's what we get to stock. All right, we're going to sit back center stage. Yep, we're going to weave right back. Yeah, so, oh my gosh. He, yeah, he definitely didn't expect that to hit. Because that could have been a carry. That could have actually potentially been stock. Oh, get him back. Here we go. Jumps through. Whiffs on the full hop nair. Funnily enough, uh, <laughs> instant double jump nair probably would have hit in that scenario. See, up oh, here. Oh, again. He hits it and he just doesn't expect it to hit. There's spot dodge. Oh no. Unfortunate. Mao's gonna get that stock. Come down with the gyro too. He's gonna maneuver around. Or Tatsu, that's right. About to see some Tatsus. I like this. Oh, go oh, lead There we go. Yeah, trying to get something started up there. Not going to, but still attacking on a little bit of damage. And Tatsu's is big. Uh, oh, uh, no. Uh, uh, uh. That's a lot of damage. Not even just the stock. You can see now it's already taking a lot of the control. Yeah. And this should be essentially game. Oh, he gets his close. corner. Oh. Good matchup, by the way, from Mao. Yeah. Now he's kind of slowly faking in the approach yeah. here with situation uh, still able to start yep. from up there you can tell that Mao is already sensing there's you know what there's but in the water let's just take, take this into a game four and see how I can go from there but even man has yeah. a lot of fight left wow good call out yeah of course yeah <laughs> he just <laughs> he saw it like yeah that's that's, that's money You can even see it in the chat. Like, it's it, like fighting against Canon can be really difficult. But the chat's definitely really seeing how like explosive Ken can be, especially against a character like Rob. I think definitely being in PSG where it's a smaller stage helps out more of like, oh, I'm not trapped in here with Rob's projectiles. Rob is trapped in here with me. So you can see where Ape and Man won the other the other game where he had Town and City had a little bit more space to play around with. Especially when you're trying to survive and properly DI or SDI or any of Ken's like combos, especially the Tatsu. It's really good on Mao to actually call out Ape Man as often as he does with Shoryu, just because like, okay, if you're gonna what's the common option Ape Man has been going for is Nair. So I can definitely call that out with Shoryu. Three, 
Yeah, kind of, kind of just the pick I expect there to be. Oh no, that was a rough spot that he put in. Jeez. All right, man. Going to game four. Early Tatsu. Good jump out. Oh, yeah. He's going to wait here. Can he get back on the stage the right way? Still stuck in the corner. Kick hits by Tatsu. That was only the light hit, so he's going to land right on the ground. So, yeah, easy grab for him there. Man, this is looking rough. Yeah, and Mao is just making great use of the, these full hops to maneuver around the stage. So you don't have to. You're not really going to see Ape Man go for uh, full hops come down, right? Because it's too telegraphed. And yeah. uh, he's going to lose his stock there to an air dash forward. Oh, this should be damage. Oh, oh, close. Yeah, he had to throw that one down, but that would have been. Ooh. I mean, even then, like, you can see how the difference, the deficit between Mao and Ape Man, he just Jesus, closed. this is about to be a three stock, man. Tatsu back. D All right, and that's enough damage. If he gets hit by a down tilt or something there, or oh, even... Oh, what a wow. wow! This man had Riff no fear. Punish. Oh, no! Smell the feet, bro. Dang. If you're if you're Perfect. already looking down, man, just smell the feet while you're at it. Damn, dude. Oh, got him in like the worst position too. Wow, that was a. I feel like that's the only forward smash that I've seen him throw out on that set, and I think I've seen him. The course I've been watching him like throw out two forward smashes. So that was just yeah. great recognition of that situation. Really, really smart play. Yeah, really smart play. That was that was good on a call too, because you know what? He took the time and the day to see the fact that you know what where is Ape Man? He's at the ledge. He's already he's already I wouldn't even say like he exhausted his projectile options. I just felt that if Ape Man is gonna stay at the corner, he might as well have done something to kinda cause Ken to shield and then see where he can take it from there. But he's trying to set up for the down to because he knows that he can get the stock on for him afterwards was kind of like his demise, so to speak.